Hello, hello developers, welcome to Elixir Pro. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to use the chain set easily and amazing tips to manipulate data using chain set. So let's start. So the first thing is that if you if you have seen some videos before, I was teaching how to create API easily with Elixir. So in this case, uh, you can create if you want, if you want allowed to do this. Uh, it's really easy for you uh, start this class. We just need to execute this command, command to start using APIs in Elixir. In this case, it's going to be something like uh, accounts, user, users, which is the context, the, the, the schema, the table, and also the values like email, first name, last name, uh, in this case, we just have in the password hash. So you just need to execute this command to start this cl uh, this class. So let's move. So the first thing is I'm gonna start my application. So in this case, we're just having the password hash. So we are having this information when we create some users. Also, if you see we are having some informations in our chain sets like uh, validate required and in this case you have to pass all those fields so if I remove one of them, something like this we're gonna receive some errors like can't be blank so now let's start manipulation, manipulating this information so the first thing that we should do is like every time we want a default value if you don't pass some information. So in this case, we are gonna use our migrations, but also create a new migrations to uh, complement the migration that we have in create users. So in this case, we're gonna create uh, Ecto Gen migration, which is a um, default role. So in this case, the default role, we are having this table which was created so we can start creating something like uh, using the same one but in this case we are gonna update our table so you can pass in the command alter table the field it's going to be something like uh, a string too but in this case is row uh, okay so let's ex execute our migrations have to migrate Okay, it's alter table. Yeah, I'm right. <laughs> but uh, sometimes that I was not execute this command. And in this case, we're gonna pass the row like a string. And also, if it's a string, and we're gonna pass a default value if you don't pass anything. And in this case, it's going to be something like a user. Also, we're gonna pass this one in hash. So let's execute let, let's execute our application. So if you see when we pass this information, it's also okay. Also, we are passing the role user, and in this case, the this user is not mapping in our view, so you can go to the user view, and the user view you can put some other information like user oh I'm sorry role also it's going to be easy to execute with a uh, yes um, great so let's create another one and now we are having the role user without passing this value also if you want to create other users passing the role you can put something like uh, admin and now it's a new uh, information so other things that we have to do it's uh, validation about the email every time we were creating users with the same email and I think it should be a unique value and in this case we are gonna create uh, manipulate our migrations but also I'm gonna put uh, a index 
also we are gonna see some errors uh, happening and we are gonna uh, make this error uh, is going to be uh, more visible to us so let's go to our migrations again and create user now you can see that we're having the emails so in this case that we're gonna create it's an index so you have to pass a command like unique index the table is user and the field is email so in this case we we're gonna execute uh, act.reset we are back and we got this error which is on the final table relation does not exist create index email ah the error was mine so let's execute this command again the table is, is not uh, using singular but in plural, in plural so now it's working so let, let's execute our application again okay so let's create a new user so now you can create uh, in, with this email and also if you try to create again you are gonna have some uh, uh, messages errors in this case the unique constraint so we have to configure this uh, error to be more uh, readable so in this case we are gonna uh, use the unique constraint so let's go, go back to our user and validate required problem is here so we are gonna pass the email because this is the field and the message is going to be default we're gonna work some messages but not right now so let's try to execute the same command again so now you can see that we are having a message and this message is, is like uh, there is uh, another user with this email so in this case uh, we can put another message like uh, uh, there is another user with this email so it's going to be something like uh, there is a user with this email so now let's recompile our code sorry this was my mistake so now you can see a new message here this is really awesome in Elixir because sometimes if you wanna want to put some uh, messages in validate required uh, without, without being uh, uh, validate required should be something like instead of can't be blank uh, can be something like uh, please fill this uh, fill this information or something like uh, other custom messages so now let's do one more things and the things is that every time email should have a uh, at so in this case we're gonna use other other validations and this validation is going to be something like uh, um, validate format also we are gonna pass the email again and uh, our one rejects it's something like this using the at every time you have to pass the at to also the message is going to be something like uh, type a valid email so let's recompile again okay so in this case the, the email is valid so let's try to pass uh, invalid email now you can see that it's a message also the problem is if I pass the at here and pa passing other uh, characters with a, with a uppercase something like this let's see what's happened this is was inserted but also the email should uh, have a, a uppercase character so in this case it's better to put other validations and conversions um, in this case we can use like uh, update change the field is going to be the email also we're gonna use the string 
L case as a function. So let's recompile. Let's test again. Also, every time the email should have a down case. If you put some other informations in mail, something like uppercase characters, it's going to be converted for uh, down case characters. So other things that we should do, it's that we are having the hash, but also we need to put some other validations for email for this user to create one. So in this case, we're gonna pass the password and password confirmations like uh, embeddable fields or virtual fields and we are gonna validate if the password is, is right. So in this case, we're gonna pass the password. Should be something like this. And password confirmation. Okay, right, so if we test this, uh, password hash can't be blank, it's okay. We are gonna create one. Also, it's better we start using the argon2. So argon2 is to encrypt our password. So in this case, it's really easy. It's a simple dependencies, and I'm gonna put this dependency. You just can copy and paste in your code. So let's go to our mix and install a new dependency. Okay, so let's execute mixdeps.get. So also we are gonna create um, a validation which is going to be a hash password. This is going to be a private function. In this case, we're gonna receive the chain set and return the chain set again. So, my, but in this case, let's understand what's come through the chain set. Let's send a request. Of course, it's going to be an error, but also if you see, we're receiving the ecto.chain set. So in this case, we are gonna uh, create some validations with this. So the first thing is that can be a default in this case, but also, we know that what's happening. So in this case, we are gonna use the password and also create the password hash. But before to create the password hash, we're gonna uh, start to understand the, how to create this information. So we are receiving the acto chain set. Acto chain set, I'm sorry, chain set. Also, this information, if it's valid, in this case, it's false, so we are just retrieving the chain set, but in, in the, the case, it is, it's going to be a, a true. We are going to use the chains, which is this information here. We're using the password. Um, okay. Also, we're gonna keep the chain set. So in this case, we're gonna start crypt our information. So we're gonna use the chain, passing the chain set. Also using the argon to add hash, passing the password. Okay, now we are have this information, and let's start uh, using a uh, virtual fields in chain set. So in our schema too. So in this case, we are gonna create uh, two new fields, which is the password. Uh, I think it's better to duplicate this information. Like, okay, using the password. Also, both of them is a uh, virtual true. Both of them. And now we are not going to use the password, but using the password, password confirmation. Mm, seems to be okay right now. Let's um, format our code. 
uh, also this field is uh, virtual because virtual is when this field is not going to be inserted but also let's start create some validations the first one is to create our hash and in this case we are gonna use the validate confirmation uh, let's see let's go to the validate confirmation also we're gonna pass the password and the message should be something like uh, password plus not match so let's recompile our code and also let's start to create but with different informations here so now we can see that the password should be uh, equal so in this case we're gonna put some the same password in password confirmations uh, there is a user with the this email, so let's create one t t one of one dot com. So now you can see that the password hash is created, and we we can see this information here. Also, this is working, but we are gonna learn some other validations, something like. Um, uh, the length and I think just length is enough to us for this case Okay, let's create the, the validate length. So in this case, we're gonna use the validate length passing the password Also mean should be something like 6 and max should be something like 100 we're not passing message, but just understand what's happening here. So in this case, we're gonna pass one, two, three. Also, we know that it's working. So one, two, three, and one, two, three. We are receiving these messages. So in this case, the password should have uh, at the minimum of six characters. So let's put these informations. Password doesn't match. Two, three, one, two, three. Also, the email is invalid. So, in this case, we're gonna pass more than um, 100 characters just to understand what's happening. So, in this case, we're receiving uh, the other message. In this case, it's better we create a custom message. So let's use the message here. Passing password should have between six to one hundred digits. So let's recompile. Now let's pass in just one to three and one to three. Oh, let's see an error. So in this case, we can see the custom message here. Uh, one, two, three, and two, one, two, three. So now it's working. And now you can see that information we created. So also, we don't need to uh, pass the password hash in, the, in our review. So let's delete this. Go to password hash. OK. Let's recompile. Okay. Create another one. So now you can see that our information to user it's working. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give us your like and see you the next episode. Bye bye.